Okay, I am choosing to go for the uh, quick fix on this one. I'm going to dump out whatever is in the gas tank. I'm thinking it's a lot of water. And then I'm going to extend this spring out so there's not so much spring tension. Actually, I just did it right there. I just extended that maybe about a quarter inch. And that's going to affect the uh, RPM on this thing as it's uh, as the governor is going back and forth um, regulating the RPM. So I'm going to go ahead and dump this out into this pan. See if there's any water in there. And then we'll hit squirt the uh, primer button a bunch of times to make sure that that gets all out of there. And I'm going to plug in my compressor real quick and blow that out as much as possible. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and dump this out. All right, I dumped as much of that out as I can. It smells pretty stale. Let me try to show you here what's going on down inside of there. You can see, see some of the water floating around down in there. So there's still stuff I can't even dump out. We're going to try to maybe go outside of the garage here and try to dump that out, get it out a little better. Um, yeah. Probably best to take this off completely, but I'm just going to try to dump it out as best I can, shake it upside down, get it all out, and then I'll shove a rag down in there to sop up what's left. And then I'll go ahead and prime and squirt out what's remaining in there as far as the water goes. And we're going to give this another shot using gas in here, get all this water out. Okay, I just took this outside and shook it all up upside down and backwards and shaking it around. Got as much of the remaining whatever out of the gas tank. And so I'm going to take this rag, okay, just a section of it. And I've got these forceps. Great tool to have in your box, especially for these small engines or picking up fasteners and screws, whatever, that you've dropped nuts. A lot of different uses like this. Don't have to worry about losing this rag down in here. So I'm going to use this to sop up the rest of what's left. I'm being careful because there's a tube that comes down below this carburetor pickup tube. So I'm being careful not to uh, strike that, put too much pressure on that. I'm going to lean it over so the remaining uh, liquid is uh, coming down to this end and so it's looking pretty good show you what I got there okay down in there much better much cleaner down inside of there now don't see any any liquid at all I think I'm pretty safe to put some gas in there now. I'll go ahead and purge out what's left uh, in the tube. Doesn't sound like there's much in there. And now I'm going to give it a quick blowout with some compressed air. You know, if you don't have compressed air, do what you can. Maybe let it sit overnight. 
use use some paper towels, shove them down in there, make sure you got all the moisture out, whatever you got to do. Okay, so I'm going to put some fresh gas in here. I'm feeling pretty confident that this is going to uh, remedy things. And while I have this air cleaner off, I'm looking at the sponge here and the air cleaner. This is brand new. Somebody put this on trying to get it to work right. And so we know that they messed with the spring. I extended this a little bit. Let's see how it does. I'm going to get this gas cap back on here. I was kind of wanting to show you guys. And I might still, if it's not working, how the diaphragm works on this thing and how it can go bad. We might still be getting into that. But uh, I'm going to first see if it'll, it'll run like this, okay? All right, I got some gas now coming up through that tube. This should fire. And what's just my concern now, I think it's going to run, uh, depending on the diaphragm. If it's any good, we'll determine if it stays running or not. And then if it does stay running, um, the RPM, the out of control RPM. So we got to, I think all we would have to do on that is adjust that spring up there on the carburetor that goes to the carburetor, a butterfly valve. We probably have to adjust that uh, spring a little more to get it right at the correct RPM or what's, you know, I don't have a tack to uh, measure it, but. I kind of do it by ear, honestly, and as long as it's not revving out of control, uh, I go for kind of an under rev condition because when it when it hits tall grass and the engine senses a load, that governor, you know, the engine is going to slow down, but the governor control then there's a little arm on the inside of the engine that feeds feeds back to the carburetor, saying I need more, you know, I need more fuel, so let more in and. Uh, Yeah, somebody's been trying to fix this. Okay, so let's see what it does. I just primed it, primed it again a little bit. Getting ready to take this strap off. Okay, it's shooting that... Uh, Shooting gas right back past that carburetor may have some. It <laughs> yeah, spring busted off and went flying somewhere. Let me try to find that spring. Okay, there's a cool little point of interest here. So I'm back here messing with this, and I'm like, okay, why isn't when that? Oh, when someone reinstalled this carburetor, okay, they took it off. They put on the new air cleaner and the filter, and when they got it back on there, they got that little arm on the other side of this detent over here. So this should be on the other side of this, so it should be over here. Let's see if we can just do that without breaking anything. Yeah, I'm just going to try to get it over that hump and turn it to where it's on the other side of it. Is that even possible? Yeah, I think that's it. Okay, so there we go. There we go. So now see how it's on this side of it? Okay, then we'll get that spring back on there. And hopefully everything will be good. I did find the spring. Okay, let me get that back on there. So that spring is just going to go kind of back on here. And then we're going to have to, between that little hole there, and right here and then once we get it close to being the right rpm we should be able to bend this tang that way or that way um, bending it out that way increases rpm so pulling this governor arm this way is going to increase the rpm increasing spring tension will make that happen so we're going to go ahead and do that put that spring back on there Okay, so I kind of got the spring back into a 
semi-okay uh, shape. <laughs> it's not perfect. But uh, you could go, you know, look and find the manual for that uh, engine. And a lot of these. Okay, so I got that spring back on there. And I had stretched it out a little bit, got it to where it's looking pretty good. And now we're going to see if this engine likes that spring tension, especially now that the butterfly valve is back in the right spot. Letting my cat out of the garage here. All right, I'm going to strap this up, the safety handle. I just use kind of this strap around the handle up there for the uh, safety bail to uh, be able to come down here and work on the engine. Now you got to be really careful about that because you don't want to get your toes up underneath the engine deck, the mower deck. So not a great idea for everyone. Um, I've been working around them a lot, so I'm pretty cognizant of it. All right, so I'm going to give it a little gas, move this out of the way. Now I'll see if it'll stay running. putting this air cleaner back on since it is staying running I'm gonna fine-tune the uh, RPM with the uh, needle nose pliers Take you down over here and show you how to adjust the RPM, fine tune it. I'm gonna grab that tab right there, and moving it that way is gonna increase the RPM. I want a little bit more RPM on this one. It's actually not bad right now. the way it's running. There's a little bit of smoke, but I know that uh, the oil level is a little high. Sounds like something's banging a little bit. And it's kind of whining. Might still be a little bit of uh, water in that carburetor that it's working out. Okay, this is interesting. I think it's 
just getting rid of that water. What I didn't get out. It's got a loose muffler. This thing's running pretty bad. Might have to take that carburetor off and clean it out. Feels like the flywheel's hanging out. I uh, squeeze the handle. It's kind of odd. I want to take a look at the blade and see if it hit anything major. Yeah. So, muffler's loose. Uh, I'm just looking. I'm feeling the bottom. Looking at the blade, it really doesn't look that bad. No major dings. I was thinking maybe it's a timing thing. We can still take this uh, off. It's a lot more work uh, to take off the engine shroud, take off uh, the flywheel nut, and look and see uh, if the flywheel key is sheared, possibly. Um, there's no indication on the blade that there was a sudden stoppage, which might have uh, damaged the flywheel key. But um, I don't know. It could also be working out water that's still in the engine, uh, in the uh, gas tank, if I didn't get rid of all of it. Maybe I didn't. I'm kind of looking down in there, looking to see if there are any water, uh, water bubbles. I don't see any water in there anymore. Um, yeah, it's just kind of odd. It seems like a timing issue almost a little bit when I started to increase the RPM to make it a little little bit more it started misfiring and I don't know uh, I think it's got some valve issues probably need some valve adjustment um, which is getting into another whole bag of tricks there um, rather not have to do a valve job on this thing. Educational, I guess, but uh, really don't want to do it. So, yep, this thing's smoky. It's a smoker. Okay, we're going to go ahead and take off this cover here. Easy stuff. I'll show you since this might possibly be an issue we're going to go ahead and take this shroud and little cover off here so i'm going to remove these two quarter inch head hex head screws that hold on the shroud here shroud cover 
sometimes you got to take the dipstick out. In this case, it comes over it, but it's kind of okay. And sometimes you got to, once you get those screws out, it'll still be stuck on there, and you got to like bang it this way because there's like a little latch right in here, right there that hooks onto that part. So, so we got that off, and here's another little quarter hex that. Uh, let's check the oil while we're at it. It's nice and level. Hasn't been running in a while. Let's go ahead and check it. I know it's a little too... No, it seems to be kind of right on, actually. I thought it was a little too high, the uh, oil level. But let's go ahead and take a look at this. Oops. Wrong way. I want to strip it. I like putting my screws down on the deck there. Now it's going to loosen up this. Now we got two of them over here. Hold this dipstick tube in place. Now that'll be able to uh, be able to remove this. And I still have that 10 millimeter on here. I usually have that 10 millimeter. It's not there. And a lot of times the uh, 10 millimeters fit on uh, these bolts that hold the shroud on. Let's get to it. All right. So got the quarter inch bit right there. Now I've got this 10. Yeah, that works. There's one over here. There's one here. Okay. And then there's one on this side. So we're just taking the shroud cover off right here. Now we're going to go ahead and take this nut off right here that is uh, holding that flywheel on. All right, about to take this nut off right here. And it's got a lot of dust in there. I don't know. See that? So when you're working on these small engines, if you decide to do this lawnmower stuff, you probably want to get a good 5-8 socket for spark plugs. Um, here's a 15 16 This isn't, isn't for spark plugs, but it fits real nice right over most of those flywheel nuts and then a lot of the, uh, for the bigger mowers, the blade nuts or bolts. And here's another uh, 13 16 popular spark plug socket. And I like having a 5 8 also with a swivel. And some of those spark plugs out there have 18 millimeter. And it's nice to have those sizes of deep well sockets. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and take that off. I got a uh, half inch uh, hex drive here with this. Let's see if it takes it off. Yep, got lucky on that one. Gonna blow a little uh, dust out of that so that we can see down in there. making too much noise so we'll turn that off all right so we've got this off and what we're going to do is go ahead and look down down in there straight on down and i'll show you here in a second i'm going to take that nut off and look down and see so there's the nut cap okay and i'm looking now straight on down here at this key if you can look straight let me try to straighten out the camera I'm trying to look straight down at that key and making sure it's not sheared at all. So you want to get the kind of get the dirt out of there. What do I do with my compressed air here? Blow it out and just check and make sure that that dust is out there. So it looks like that key is not sheared. It's lined up really nice with the keyway. Not seeing any shearing going on there. So we've eliminated that issue. I'll go ahead and real quick put this kind of back together and call that good. So we checked that block. Didn't need to do it, but now if you need to, you need to know. Now you know. And this goes back on together pretty, pretty easy. So. We'll get this back on there with the nut. 
So usually the stuff comes apart. This uh, screen is separate, separates from this cup. But ain't got nothing like that. No washers. Sometimes there might be a washer down in there. Pay attention to how it comes apart. And whack it on there real good with the proper German torque. That would be guten tight. And then we'll go ahead and take this, we're gonna start taking this carburetor off then and make sure all the contamination is out of it completely. All right, looking for a flathead. Uh, where'd my flathead go? I took it off of there. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and take this off here. Got a flathead screwdriver. Taking this cover off. This whole cover situation seems to be Pretty good. Things like brand new. Here's a little elbow rubber thingy right there, which goes to your. This is the crankcase breather tube. All right, and then we're gonna take the spring off of here, set it down on the deck so we don't, so it doesn't get lost. Somebody had, had this off before. Put it back on. All right. So then we got the. Uh, socket here it looks like about a half an inch my sockets out here and in this case i like doing uh here and take this 15 16 off put it back a half inch down there now i got this extension here i like using these hex extensions for the the drills and the impacts uh just great tool I mean, Put all those different bits in the end of your extension there, and I'm probably going to use a. Uh, uh, it would most likely be a three eight socket extension, maybe even half um, half inch. We'll see. What size is this? Uh, there we go. That'll do it. So it's going to be a quarter inch extension, and it looks like a thirteen millimeter will do. I do with my, I was working on a zero turn earlier this morning and I got my quarter inch drive hex, but someplace, where is that thing? Okay, it was still attached to my vice grip. I was using this and about a um, 11 millimeter to tighten up some set screws that go on a pulley on a shaft for a hydro drive on a z-turn okay so i'm gonna put this on there okay get that set up get this off this one bolt here a lot of times uh, there'll be a bolt here all right there isn't in this case now pay attention to as you're doing this right here a lot of times there's a spacer that comes out when you're taking this off see that see that cylindrical spacer thing well, it's kind of part of this bracket here, so it doesn't look like it's going to fall off with that, that cylindrical thing right there. Sometimes that's it's just a loose piece that falls out. I think it might still come. Yeah, it would still come out. See how it's coming out? I'm just going to leave it crammed in there so it doesn't fall out, and we're going to go ahead and take this off. There's one more little screw here, and that looks like a Phillips saw. I might have to hold on to the back side of that with a uh, nail nose or something to take that off. Is that Phillips? I think it was. I just leave my tools and stuff on the deck. Tools and parts on the deck. Having those little uh, mechanical or magnetic, rather, uh, parts trays are nice. Okay, so this isn't really the screw that's supposed to fit into that. I'll grab one that's actually supposed to go in there. And then as you're taking this off, be careful with the governor arm here. Don't bend it up. All right, and then when that comes off there, it's you got to kind of twist it this way to get it off, the, off that uh, angled governor arm, the end of it. Okay, I'm just kind of sit that back up there. And that's that. Then we'll go ahead and take off the uh, one, two, three, four, five Phillips heads. I'll put this on the bench, and we'll go ahead and take that off.
Okay, on these, I do like to get off as much crud, grime as possible. This this is the worst kind of dirt, you know, with the petroleum and the dirt combined, the oil, gas, dirt combination is just, it just makes a total mess. And when you're cleaning this off, watch out for that O-ring right there. Make sure that that's in there and good. Sometimes that could be an issue if it's uh, if it's not in place properly, or if the O-ring's worn out. You might have to uh, replace it. That would cause what kind of condition would that cause? If you know, as far as engine running, if you know, leave a comment in the description. If that O-ring was bad, how would that affect how the engine's running? What say you? Go ahead and put it in the description. Not the description, in the comments. Sorry about that. I will put it in the description. And if so, if you want to test yourself, you can go down there and check. Because if that O-ring's bad, and it's, it would then be sucking outside air excessive, what would that cause the engine to do? Okay, so there, that's kind of brushed off. I'm going to blow it off real quick. Okay. Real quick air blast. Get that done. I'm going to grab my Phillips again. So we have these five screws that we're going to take off. And I like putting out a towel here, and actually, since I, after taking all that dirt off, it's on the towel mostly. I'll dump it in the trash can, and then get my nice, fresh Aloha towel bag out here with the hibiscus on it. And we've got some really cool hibiscus growing this year. It's kind of nice. All right, I'm going to take this off, that little washer, and get to it on these screws. One. This bit's not staying in here too good. You get a better view on this. There we go. Two. Really not staying in there good. Must be my Harbor Freight one. Does that do anything? I don't know, man. That's kind of weird. How's that thing work? It just doesn't stay. It's strange. Okay. Three. Yeah, okay, I don't like this thing anymore. I haven't had it long. Four. And. Okay, and then this thing's just going to pop off. Now there's a diaphragm that's going to be on here and a filter. Check out this little filter. We'll blow that out. And now uh, make note as you're taking this apart, okay, it is, it goes, let's see, the diaphragm is closest to the carburetor. Is that correct? I am not for sure, but when I'm taking this off here, see the there's a gasket. Diaphragm. Diaphragm underneath was closest to the carburetor body like this. And then the gasket was closer to the uh, was up against the carburetor body itself. So it was like so it's like diaphragm, gasket, carburetor. And I guess that's correct. But I think it might not be. Um, because these little flapper valves right here, I would think, need to be directly on 
the body of the carburetor where those holes are. Well, actually, where this one hole is right here. I think that should be right up against the body of the carburetor, but it's not. It is the gasket and then the diaphragm. So here's the diaphragm. And when this goes bad, it can't pump this fuel like it should. These get hard, brittle, or they're just worn out. It won't do what it's meant to do. Sometimes these will get a hole in them. I mean, this is still very subtle and soft. A little, a little pushed out there, but I mean, this doesn't really look that bad. Uh, what I want to do, though, is double check and make sure that the gasket uh, goes, I think it's the gasket that goes against the carburetor, and then it's the diaphragm, and then it's the carburetor on top of that, and stacking it like that. So I'm going to look that up real quick and uh, research it and see. I'm not sure. Now I'm going to go ahead and dump out the uh, gas that's in here to make sure that it doesn't have any water in it. Okay, so I just got this big baking pan, and I'm going to go ahead and dump this out. I suspect there's still water in here, even though I uh, dumped it out yesterday and blew it out. I still think there might be some in there. We'll see here in a second. What's going on with this? Is it still got water in it? Takes a little shaking to get the stuff out. Okay. Don't really see any evidence down there of water right now. It's pretty empty, but still might see some water dots. The tank is very clean. It's not rusty. It's good. There's some sediment right down in there. Go ahead and spray that out. Some compressed air. And then let's look. Let's look at the gas and see what we got going on. I'm not seeing right now any any kind of water bubble at the bottom of this gasoline. It's looking pretty good. I just put this in there yesterday. Not seeing any water collecting on that. Could be wrong though. Got a glass jar. I want to take a better look at it. Okay, here's a glass jar. I still have from a few days ago. And if you look real close, you can see the uh, water that's down inside of that one. You see that? It's kind of hard to see. Yeah, you can kind of see that line of it right there, how it separates. So I'm just going to dump this out and in my gas can, but I'm not going to dump the water that's in the bottom that's just the last little bit. I'll go ahead and leave in there, and then the part with the water in it, I'll dump out. Okay. So got my glass jar cleaned out pretty much. All the water out of there. I'll take a rag, get any uh, residual stuff out of there.
Might have a little bit of water in there. We'll see in a minute. Let that settle down a little bit. It doesn't look that cloudy, so there's probably not a lot of... There is a little cloudy. A little bit. There might be a little water in there. Give it a second to settle down. I think we got most of that water out, though. And I'll go ahead and take the screen and blow that out real good. Yeah, so this is not super clear gas. Okay, there's some micro water droplets in there maybe. I'm just going to let it settle for about an hour. I might reuse this. There, There is no super just puddles of water at the bottom of this, but it is a little cloudy. So we'll eventually get some uh, water to settle down to the bottom of that. All right. So. I'm going to take a little break here and look up whether or not this gasket should be. I think the diaphragm should actually be up against the, oh yeah, and don't lose this spring, by the way. Make sure that stays in there. Uh, see if the diaphragm itself is supposed to be um, right up against the carburetor body. While I'm at it, I'm um, going to pull out the screen, which looks just fine. And I'll blow out this little sediment um, bowl down there with some compressed air. Is this going to reach? Yeah, it'll reach. All right, so we got this. Yeah, be mindful of uh, your O-ring that could come out with your Teflon here like a Teflon ring and then a black O-ring. I'm just going to leave it in place. And I'll go ahead and blow down through all the, all the holes I can find. Any holes down in there? I'm going to go check for the installation of that diaphragm real quick. All right, so I did check on that, and I was right. The diaphragm should go against the actual carburetor like this. First. And then the gasket I might have been wrong but uh, <laughs> I forget how it went in there this is how it goes so it goes diaphragm against carburetor and then The gasket. Okay, so we get that pretty lined up. I want to take a little scribe or something, line up those holes first. Hey, while looking for my scribe, I found my 
punch, but that's still too big. So let me find my scribe. Anything small, kind of round. Don't see my scribe right off. So I've got this little file. I'll do it. Just get in there and line everything up. All those little five holes. And then I'll put the fasteners in there. Hold this in place. I'll oh, get the screws just right there in place. Nice and easy. They're kind of not threaded at the very end, so it helps to keep from uh, jacking up the diaphragm and gasket. Put this bit on here and kind of like getting these started just with hand force instead of the uh, drill at first. Just first couple twists. Get it in there. Get the threads going by hand. And any fastener that you install on a machine, I recommend get it started by hand first so you don't cross thread. And just make sure it's going in nice and smooth before you put any type of uh, impact wrench or something like that on it. Okay, so we got these started. I'll go ahead and zap them real quick. <laughs> yep, real nice. This was working. It broke. Harbor Freight. Okay. And it's easy to miss them, so make sure you got all five of them tightened up. And make sure that this little piece is on this side of this little plastic piece here, right there. Because a problem we saw earlier also was that it was like way over here. So it was, that wasn't good. Okay, so we got this back together. Let's take a look at our gas real quick. See if that's settled. I set that down and I'm looking at it here. It's still just cloudy. It's got some cloudy gas in that jar. I'm not seeing any uh, real solid water puddle at the bottom. So it wasn't that bad. And we can just kind of wipe this down. Get any like little dirt out of here. Put this back on, and we're going to slap this back on the machine. Um, debating on whether or not to uh, take that head off and take a look at the valves. I suspect the valves might be messed up on this engine, but we'll just go ahead and put this back on real quick. See how it runs. Maybe we won't have to mess with the valves. Okay, before we put this back on, we're making sure that that O-ring and the Teflon piece is there. The O-ring looks in pretty good shape. So we'll start off by getting the governor arm right here in that little hole right there. So we're going to have to turn it sideways to get it lined up with the hole and go over that angle. It's actually the bigger hole. All right, and while we're doing that, we got this piece down here with the spacer. And that spacer did fall out, I think, didn't it? Yeah, it did. Where'd it go? Yeah, so this piece, like I was saying earlier, can come out pretty easily. We'll put that back in there. There's a lot of dirt on there, so it helps it stay in. Wonderful. So I do believe this is how it goes back. Like that. Or is it like this? This is like this. Yep. Get that back on. The inlet tube there. I've got this bolt. Got 
got that started by hand. And while it's loose, go ahead and put your elbow back on there before you get everything tight so things can move around a little bit. The big end of the elbow goes to the carburetor, and then the smaller end goes onto the uh, breather tube, actually, is what it is. Okay, and we'll take and get that impact over here and whack, zap this on real quick. Okay. Get this on. And there's a, I'm not going to, I'll get another bolt for this in a bit. So we got this. And we'll get the shroud back on. And by the way, here is where you can find the model number. It's usually on the shroud, so you got to take kind of this off. And then it'll expose this. Let's see what year this is. This is, looks like an 08. That right there, part of the, uh, the numbers, that right there designates the year. So it's either 2000, maybe a 2000 machine. And then all of these numbers have significance down to like what, where it was manufactured even. Okay, this is kind of a code. All right, so we're looking up parts for this if you are. Uh, you would start here, and basically these these numbers right here, these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then B2. That, those are the main numbers you would use to, so that's the model type, and then that's the code, model type code. Okay, so slap this back on. Make sure this gets lined up good here. Let's just go behind it. Yeah, I think that goes behind. This little piece goes behind the shroud part. Find my bolts. There's one of them. And, and this is pretty easy. These are like tens. Get that started with my hex driver. Let's get it started by hand. Okay, there's one. And we got another one over here on this side. It's not lining up real good. I don't know why. Get in there. What's going on? Okay. So if those holes don't line up, maybe take the bolts back out, jimmy it around a little bit. There's another little uh, back flap cover thing here. Same on the other side. So get that started. This hole's lined up. Start it by hand there. Another one over here. Same kind of deal. All right. I can find my other one. Yep. Got a big one. One goes back here. It's about ready to uh, fire up. Get these little quarter inch jobs started where the dipstick tube is. one and then another one on the other side a lot of times these dick stip or dipstick tubes only have one of these mounting screws but this one's got two so here we go get one tightened up on this side this side we'll find that 10 where did my 10 go? Right here. 10 mil. Get these shroud bolts tightened up. I already started by hand. So we know the threads are going to 
are good to go. And where's my spring? I just saw it. There it is. Watch out for those little springs. And then your spring's going to go right here in the little hole. Oops, there it is. Spring goes in that little hole right there. It's a little jimmy in. Jimmy it. Let me get this in there and hold the camera at the same time. Success. And then we take this and put this on that right there. Give it a little pinch. This might not be the best way to attach it here. We're going to, and it broke. Okay, so that broke. I'm going to probably put a little better hook end onto the spring so it stays on here better. That's about to come off. So I'm just going to kind of redo that and get it on there a little better. And it's pretty malleable, so you just kind of do it by hand. Get this back on there. There's actually a hole down there, so that's that's good. All right, so got a little spring tension. I'm going to pull it, stretch it out a little more. All right, got this on top here. And there's my air cleaner. Okay, and this pointy end goes towards the pull rope. Get my uh, flathead doing squats today, giving the knees workout. All right, I'll go ahead and get some gas in here, and I should be about ready. <clears throat> uh, whatever was in there yesterday when I started this was no good. That gas was no good. All right, I'm going to collect my tools. And we'll get to fire this thing up and see if we're going to dig into the valves or not. Hopefully not. Hopefully what we did there, cleaning it out real good, blowing it out, will be sufficient. We're going to see right now. So I'm just going to kind of leave that hanging there. And let's have a go at this, see what it does. All right, so what did we do? Took the carburetor off and the gas tank, cleaned it out, blew it out. Uh, double check for the uh, diaphragm gasket stack, make sure it was uh, on there properly. Blew it out real good. Um, what else? Here's the, here's the uh, gas that was in there. Still just a bit cloudy. Not terrible. It's not perfectly clear either. And I don't see, I'm holding it up real close to the light now. I'm, yeah, I'm getting a little bit of crud at the bottom. It's just a little bit of contamination. Not, not much. I'm going to let that settle a few more hours. Might be able to reuse that gas. Just setting it up. Putting it out of the way. Okay. Give it a few squirts. And see if we got to get into the valves. So we know the uh, flywheel key is good. Carburetor should be good. Primer bulb is working. Spark plug plugged in. Yep. Give it a shot. Might have to adjust the um, governor spring a little bit. So I'm going to grab my. Needle nose pliers in preparation for that. I'm gonna go ahead and strap on my um, strap here so that I don't have to hold it constantly and I can go adjust the carburetor governor spring as needed. I got it lightly 
kind of loosely holding that handle so that I can like quick release it if I need to. No big deal. Okay, it's so primed it. Let's see what she's got. Okay, so that's much better. Sounding much better. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten up that shroud cover and take the blade off real quick. All right, so that RPM seemed a little bit on the low side. I'm gonna take this tab here where the spring is connected, and if I move it out that way, it's gonna increase the engine RPM. So I'm gonna do that just a pinch and see how that sounds. All right, didn't sound too bad. It's got a little knock in there when you go to turn it off. You can hear it. Don't know what's going on with that. We'll just take a look at the blade. Get that off, sharpen it. But I think this will do. What do you think? Hundred bucks in the springtime, maybe. Okay, let's see if I can get this underneath my garage door. There it is. See what's going on with this blade. All right, what is that? That's about a five eighths, maybe. So I'll get my 3 8 drive for my impact wrench and take this off. Let's see if this will come off pretty easy or not. That came off pretty easy. And you might want to unplug your uh, spark plug if you're doing this. And you don't like uh, the idea of the spinning round possibly and firing. Yeah, yeah. Blade's seen better days. Go ahead and sharpen that up real quick. So what I do is I flatten off the hills and valleys. I'll just take an angle grinder with a stone or a flapper disc. I like the flapper discs. They don't last as long as the stones. Now just grind that flat. Keep that profile, but just grind a flat, and then I'll go try to uh, reestablish that blade angle. And you don't want to sharpen on the underside. Here is the angle, and you want to maintain that yeah, 30 degree is optimum. And then all I do is I take the little burrs off the back, but I do not sharpen the underside. You don't sharpen the underside. So the sharpened edge goes up. When you reinstall it, the sharp edge, up. Okay, so when you're looking at it from the bottom, you shouldn't see any kind of angle bevel because it should be on top. I'm going to go ahead and sharpen this. Be right back. All right. Got this nice sharp. Ooh, look at that shiny. And I just like, kind of like looking down the edge there. Probably can't tell. But Got a pretty good angle on it. Sharp. And I just want to make sure it's not round, that it's got an edge, not rounded off. Pretty good. I could take and probably, um, like, taking a piece of steel and just knocking off the last little burrs. Just a, you know, you can use a punch, something like that. Just a, Piece of steel to kind of blunt the uh, jagged edges if there are any left off of the. This one's pretty good. This one's really good. Like, so it's kind of deburring it. Deburr and burnish. Okay, so that's that. Put this baby back on. Okay, bevel up. Get back on there. 
Don't see any oil really leaking from the main uh, main engine seal. Okay, so that's that's pretty good. Looking good. Okay, got the blade back on, and let's see if we probably don't even have to prime this thing. It it runs pretty good. It runs pretty decent. I might even have a bag for this thing. Look at that. Didn't even need to prime it. It's kind of nice. Makes a little clunking sound when you shut it down, though. Kind of concerned about that, but I think it's going to be good to go. I mean, I checked it out. Uh, crank might be a little bent or something, but I'll take it out and see how it uh, cuts. Uh, my neighbor needs his grass cut. He's pretty old now. He doesn't do it. I've been cutting his grass last couple of years. Don't even. You don't even talk about it. I just do it. All right. Let's see. We get a. I think I got a bag for this. Let's take a look. I got a few in my shed. Okay. I have this bag right here. Let's see if this can uh, get on it. Put it on. Let's see. I'll show you here how this. They got. This one's got like the two hook. It's kind of like a hook setup. Places for a couple hooks. Like you can see it. I don't know if you can see it. Like right here. It just goes around these little. Or near where these springs are. Let's see if it's, it's been in the shed a couple of years. Hopefully I can get rid of it. Yay! It fits. Okay. Cool. So that just upped the price to a good 110 bucks for that uh, that mower right there with the bag. That's 110, probably get 115. Now I'm just going to make it pretty and should be good to go. Might be even 120 bucks. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and spray this down, what I like doing. I got a little black paint. I'm going to touch that gas can up real quick. It's just pictures. Now I'm just selling it with pictures, good pictures. Little soapy water is what I do. And I'll get this. Let it soak. Yeah, my muffler, muffler was a little loose. Tighten up that muffler. That, that's what might have been uh, jostling around on the shutdown was that muffler jingling around. Okay, so just going to do this and give it a quick power wash. Might uh, take some stickers off of here. Might just do that to show you a cool little trick with removing these stickers if you want to remove them. Uh, this stuff with the identification uh, numbers on it, I'll leave on there. Uh, it's got a low sticker for service. I'll leave that on there. But there's a barcode sticker on this side. I'll show you how to take that off real quick. Get the wheels. This would be a good looking mower. Now especially with that bag. So I'll show you a couple tricks with the heat gun. Let me just go ahead and Hose this down real quick. I'll take it outside, get it hosed off. Alrighty, so I started cutting my neighbor's yard with this, and less than five minutes into it, it uh, became my uh, smokehouse. So it was smoking like crazy. We're going to go ahead and pull that head off, see what the valves are doing. And then uh, go from there. So head off. I'm suspecting head gasket. We're going to see what's going on with it. Probably bad head gasket. When we have the head off, we'll be able to also move the piston all the way down and see the condition of the cylinder, uh, see what's going on there. 
doesn't have any evidence of leaks like a head gasket leak or something like that, but it could be just uh, that might be what's going on. We're going to have to uh, go into it and look, see where that oil leak's coming from. But it's getting up to the combustion chamber. Is it getting up there through uh, a valve guide? Uh, is the uh, breather bad? Maybe that uh, maybe that breather tube that goes across to the carburetor. Um, maybe some of that is getting in. Let's take a look at the carburetor. See if that's might just be shooting out. <clears throat> back into the carburetor. That would be an easier fix than taking a head off. How about that? Because if that, if the uh, crankcase uh, pressure, you know, for the emissions, crankcase breather, if that's going bad, the, uh, or if it's not draining, that could be a thing, um, that crankcase breather yeah, so we got oil here. So that's probably either being caused by blow-by or the oil that's getting up into the crankcase breather mechanism, which will be right about here. Let me show you what's going on here. Okay, that thing on the side right there is that crankcase breather. This valve can go bad or where this, where the oil it starts filling up with oil and you get back pressure oil fills up in here and if it gets high enough it'll here's where that tube goes across to the carburetor it'll start shooting oil back into the carburetor and that's what's happening and it's burning that oil so let's take this breather off it's an easy thing to take off real quick looks like those are five uh or a uh, quarter inch easy enough okay cool I need a screwdriver get the sucker off there we go already some oil coming up out of there all right so that's covered with oil now there's a little hole down 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 inside of this thing if I zoom in on it a little better Somewhere down in there, there's a little hole, and we're going to see if that's blocked up. All right. <laughs> see if we can see that. I'm going to clean this off with a little piece of rag, shove it down in here, sop up this oil. See if I can show you that little hole. Yeah. Okay. So there, down in the corner, you can kind of see it. Adjust the angle of the camera. You barely see it right in there. So it's right at the tip of my finger there. I'd have to bring the camera down just a pinch and adjust it. There we go. That is it. Like right there. We're gonna make sure we're gonna stick a wire down in that hole. Make sure that it's clear. If it's not, the oil will not drain. See this fills up, starts getting filled up with oil, and then it will shoot out through here back to the carburetor. If this just gets you know, starts getting filled up, filled up, filled up. It's got nowhere to go. It'll shoot out back to the carburetor. It's supposed to be just unburned gases, like unburned emissions. It's emissions control kind of thing. Let's see, yeah, this this uh, muffler's loose. Okay, put this down in here so you can see that hole better. There it is. See that. couple of them. Okay, I got this little pipe cleaner. 
times you get these if you start ordering carburetors and stuff for these engines. They'll give you uh, some little extras. Okay, so I'm trying to poke down in here. I don't even know if that's the hole that I'm supposed to poke into or not. One of these holes. That one seems plugged up. This one here, it goes. Okay, it's open. All right. So, looks like that should be allowing oil to drain back down into the crankcase. So, this little flapper. It's back. This little flapper here. Here's to be okay. It's kind of like a one-way check valve. It looks to be on there okay. I'm gonna uh, poke this hole right here. Make sure this is good. So if this is allowing the flow all right go back down to the crankcase, then the next possible problem might be a uh, blow-by. We'll probably end up taking this back off and taking a look at the, uh, the head, the, you know, the head gasket, what the valves are doing. Uh, so we'll just put this back on real quick, fire it up, see if we can get it to smoke again. Okay. Uh, sorry, they don't want to. Uh, not a dealer. Okay. I'm talking to myself. All right. Just wiped up. See if we can get this to smoke like it was doing. That right there, who knows, might have uh, knocked something loose, and now it will be allowed to flow back. The, uh, the smoking was happening kind of intermittently. So let's see if it'll do it. Probably will. Okay, we got all these tools up. Not going to hit the tools on the floor. All right. With this, I might leave this air cleaner off and see if I could see the oil shooting in there as that's happening. If it will, again, might have fixed it. Might have uh, got that hole cleaned up enough. Okay, let's see. Squirt a little gas in there. It might just have to burn off any residual oil that's in there. We'll see.
Yep, it's really shooting out there through that. Uh, coming out through the carburetor every now and then, that oil squirting out of there. So I'm going to take that head off and see, look at the condition of the uh, cylinder walls. May need some new rings, hone cylinder, valve job. 